we want to prove the limit of the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine to the power of n of x dx is 0 as n approaches infinity. Now, I want to show that for any epsilon larger than 1, there exists such a capital N so that when small n is larger than capital N, the absolute value of this integral is strictly less than epsilon. But, before, but the absolute value of this integral is actually, I don't need the absolute value here because the sine, sine of x is always positive over this interval, 0 over pi over 0 to pi over 2. Sine x is always positive. The sine x to the right to the power of n is also positive. Therefore, if you integrate it over that integral, it should also be positive. So I don't need the absolute value here. So I want to show that from 0 to pi over 2, sine to the power of n of x dx is strictly less than epsilon. But now, before I reach epsilon, I want to split it into maybe two different integrals and try to loosen the inequality just a little bit and still prove that each of the splitted integrals are both approaching to zero. So see if I can do that. So I want to split it into zero over pi over two minus epsilon over two. This is my first integral. Sine of, to the power of n of x dx plus. My second integral, second interval is from this point, pi over two minus epsilon over two, all the way up to pi over two of sine raised to the power of n of x dx. I want to show that each of these integrals are approaching z to zero. Okay, so since I know that the sine, like I said, sine of x is an increasing function over the interval of zero to pi over two minus epsilon over two. Therefore, if I replace x with the maximum value here, which is this point, then I can loosen then I can loosen this inequality. Then sine of x should be less than sine of this point. Okay, so this is less than or equal to still copy down everything, zero to all that. So I'm gonna replace sine to the power of n of pi over 2 minus epsilon over 2 dx. Notice this is already a constant. So plus, again, pi over 2, pi over 2 minus epsilon over 2 sine nx. I want to maybe loosen this part as well. Because sine of uh, Sine of x, as we know, that is always less than or equal to 1. So I can replace sine x simply with just 1. I can, this inequality is always also enlarged. Sine x, x is less than 1. Therefore, this is less, replace 1 to the power of n is still 1. So this is indeed a little bit bigger than that part. Right? So this is fine, dx. Now, Hopefully, I want to show that each of these integrals are approaching to zero. Now, since this is already a constant, it has nothing to do with x anymore. So I can just simply take this out to the front and times the difference of upper bound minus the lower bound. Lower bound okay? So this is actually equal to The upper bound minus lower bound pi over 2 
minus y over 2 times this coefficient. This is already a coefficient. And we still regard n as a constant, and this is also a constant. So overall, it's a constant times this constant sine to the power of n of pi over 2 minus y over 2. Okay, this is already 1. Take 1 out of here. Multiply the difference between upper bound and lower bound. Simply, the difference is simply pi y over 2. So this is plus y over 2. So it's already looking very promising because what we know that in the end, y over 2, of course, will tend to 0. And this is, this will hopefully also tend towards 0 as well. Now, since we know that sine of pi over 2 is exactly 1, but this quantity is strictly less than pi over 2 and strictly larger than 0. Therefore, also because sine is an increasing function, therefore, sine of this quantity is strictly less than 1, strictly larger than 0, and raised to the power of n. So when you raise a quantity that's in between, strictly in between 0 and 1, raised to the power of infinity, of course it's going to approach 0. In other words, if we want to speak more rigorously, we can say that, okay, for, for a very, very small positive number, let's call that, let's call it for pi over, uh, y over pi. I want to use this as my, as my random and arbitrary positive number. For this number, I can say that this 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 quant this quantity this quantity approaches zero. In other words, there exists a capital N so that when small n is larger than capital N for this positive number, I can always have the absolute value of this quantity, which is of this quantity is already positive, so I don't need the absolute value. So this is all. So this is already sine to the power of n of pi over two minus y over two. This is already I can say strictly less than y over pi for every little n that's larger than capital N. So therefore, if I replace this quantity with this value, I can loosen this inequality further. So this, I, okay, let me just, all the way up to here, I can again further loosen that, which let's say is strictly less than, still I want to, over two, in fact, I will maybe replace this constant with a bigger number so that it's further loosened. I want to just ignore the y over 2. Minus y over, I don't, I don't want that. I'll get rid of that. I'll just replace this quantity with pi over 2. Pi over 2 is a little bit bigger than this quantity, so it is a, bit, a little bit loosened, right? So, again, this is, again, a little bit loosened by this. Y over pi. Y over pi. So, plus, this is still here. Plus, y over 2. Now, this and that cancel out. This is actually pi over, y over 2, plus y over 2, which is y. So, in other words, I've really found a capital N when small n is larger than capital N. The, uh, this quantity, the absolute, but I don't need the absolute value. This quantity, I want, like I said, I wanted to prove this strictly less than y. Now, I've really proven that it is 
through multiple steps of loosening inequality, it is really strictly less than epsilon. For every little n that's larger than this capital N, any given epsilon, that epsilon is this epsilon, given that's random and arbitrary. Uh, so where did this capital N come from? This capital N, N come from the fact that sign raised to the power of N of this constant quantity is obviously approaching to zero as N approaches infinity. So, so that's where this capital N came from. So I... So again, let me just uh, explain further about the motivation behind behind this step. So how would how would possibly one come up with splitting this into two different intervals? Exactly, you know, pi over two minus epsilon over two, and that. how how in the world? I mean, possible can so here's a possible explanation that when you for example, plug this, uh, this no, not this integral, but simply plug this integrand, this function, into any online graph or software or anything. And if you input n equals very, very large, 1,000, 10,000, you will see some graph in that graph or something like this. So this is zero all the way to pi over two of that interval. This is maybe, let's say, this is one, right? This is one. So a normal sine function without power should look like this, right? But when you input a power of very like n equals 1,000, you get something that looks like So here, here is just a you know a rough illustration. Okay, so it's it's not a precisely the graph. So this, but you get the idea. So as n becomes very large, you you see some graph look like this. So that means this, if n is even larger, ten thousand, a hundred thousand, it'll even become. This line will become even flatter, more closer to the x-axis and this line will become even closer to this dotted line that's perpendicular to uh, the x-axis which sits just at, at pi over 2. So that gives us a motivation that maybe we should split the interval into two parts. One all the way up to this part, let's say it's, it's pi over 2 minus a epsilon over 2. So remember, epsilon is al already very, very small. So e pi epsilon over 2, it represents the distance of this part. Very, very small. Right? As you can expect, as n gets even larger, this will become even smaller and smaller and smaller. So, like I said, this area from here, this area represents the this part, this integral, and this area from here to here, this, this part, this area represents that integral. So this is a very, very interesting motivation just from you know, modern technology.